I have a couple of more uh, uh, observations on the early uh, impacts on me and my Italian identity. Uh, and one really important one uh, was uh, uh, going to college and choosing a language. I went to Northwestern University and had a wonderful Italian department, but it did not really cross my mind to study Italian. Uh, at that time, in the mid-50s, um, the late 50s, uh, the French language was, had a kind of uh, cachet. It was cool and, uh, and chic, and, uh, and so I took French. Uh, another thing is, when I was in college, uh, on the positive side, I saw the movie uh, La Dolce Vita, and I saw a completely different Italy than the Italy that uh, <coughs> I had been told about uh, by my uh, friends and relatives, uh, Italian friends and relatives. Of course, I'd never been to Italy. But uh, even in those days, uh, we did consider Italy backward. Uh, and uh, uh, the La Dolce Vita in 1960 uh, showed a, a different uh, image. Uh, what, uh, I was uh, lucky enough to be um, uh, chosen to lead the uh, uh, kind of experimental program at the University of Illinois Chicago uh, in the uh, mid-70s. Uh, a local club financed uh, a professor's salary, uh, and I was chosen to be that professor uh, to teach Italian American. It didn't have any real status within the university, although uh, I did teach courses for credit and all that sort of thing. And it is from that platform that I made uh, uh, work with folks in the American Italian Historical Association uh, to. Uh, create a, a, a grant proposal to the National Endowment for the Humanities uh, to uh, document and share the history of Italians in Chicago. Uh, there were no real updated histories of Italians in Chicago at that time, uh, and uh, we uh, delved into this project, uh, convinced that social history was the thing, uh, oral history. We did 100 oral histories that are now online, uh, uh, by the way. And uh, we've uh, collected photos, documents, memorabilia, and created an exhibit at the Downtown uh, Cultural Center in Chicago, which uh, that exhibit uh, we brought back to the Casa Italia and uh, is still in existence today. And, uh, it's... Um, uh, it, it's still relevant, although it could use some updating, and we could use some more money, obviously. Uh, uh, so we and we had uh, many different events uh, in uh, as part of that uh, grant uh, project. Uh, maybe uh, uh, one a month, maybe uh, 40 or 50 events uh, in different parts of the community on different topics that had to do with Italian American identity. Uh, uh, we. Uh, uh, stirred up quite a lot of activity in the process and uh, uh, provided some uh, archives and, and oral history uh, resources that uh, were used by uh, many scholars. Uh, Guglielmi, for instance, in his book on uh, White on Arrival, used our oral histories. So, uh, I, I don't really want to comment on the way he used it, but he did indeed use it. Uh, so uh, that uh, that led me into the uh, American Italian Historical Association uh, when the and when the uh, and I became very involved there and uh, uh, curated a number of the conferences that took place in Chicago and uh, I did uh, quite a bit uh, of uh, uh, of activity within the community. Uh, I wasn't 100% uh, scholar or 100% Italian-American activist. I, I was a mixture of the two. Uh, as far as women's history is concerned, uh, I, uh, uh, I didn't get involved in it, even think about doing it until uh, what, uh, I'd been doing Italian-American history for 30 or 40 years, <laughs> uh, 1910 or so. 
uh, of course, growing up as an Italian American, uh, I always knew the strength of Italian women. Uh, the women ran the family, uh, the social events, and and all that uh, stuff. And uh, typically, the women were uh, in charge of uh, uh, keeping track of uh, the finances. Uh, and uh, uh, although men often claimed that they were the boss, uh, Commando Io you know, is uh, 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 not as true as uh, uh, many would like it to be. Uh, many, uh, most Italian women uh, uh, led their mates to believe that, they, that the man commanded, but uh, uh, in reality, uh, the women usually got their way, uh, in my observation. So I was not unaware that uh, women played an important role in the Italian community. But uh, uh, when we began doing all of our stuff, it was male-oriented, uh, even though we interviewed a good number of uh, females in our oral history project. Uh, and uh, I had done uh, uh, several books, uh, one uh, general book on Italians in Chicago, and that tended to be uh, mostly male, uh, with uh, some references to uh, occasional references to females. Uh, I did a book on uh, uh, my first book, Italians in Chicago Photo Book, uh, that sort of uh, mirrored the Italians in Chicago project and kind of tailed off in the 1960s. And then uh, my last book I, uh, was in, in the Arcadia series was a, uh, uh, a, a picture history uh, of Italians since World War II, Italian immigrants to Chicago since World War II. Uh, that was partly because I left them out of the first couple of books and got some uh, feedback and uh, responded to that feedback. I, I can't say that there was a lot of feedback from women that I hadn't covered them, but the trend in the industry, uh, the historical profession, uh, was to uh, start looking at uh, women. And uh, I'm great for ideas, and uh, as I tell people all the time, I can keep folks employed 24-7 on Italian-American culture, uh, if they uh, let me. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I, I wanted to do, I thought that someone should do uh, something on Italians, Italian women in Chicago. And uh, I set out to do it, but I wisely chose some wonderful, two wonderful women, uh, <clears throat> Gloria Nardini, uh, who is a, a professor at UIC, a uh, professor of writing and communication and ethnog ethnography, and uh, uh, a very uh, diligent scholar. And also uh, we chose Kathy Catrambone, uh, a, a journalist uh, who uh, was uh, from the major Little Italy in Chicago and who had, in fact, done an, Ar an uh, Arcadia book on uh, Little Italy in Chicago, the Taylor Street area. And so uh, uh, using the, the those uh, two uh, as a foil, uh, and uh, taking their guidance all the way, we reached out to uh, women writers around Chicago and uh, women who weren't writers but had a story to tell and were willing to uh, maybe sit down and take it and, and do it. And so we pieced this all together. And I don't know of, uh, uh, of many books uh, that uh, uh, bring the women from a particular... Uh, geographic area uh, uh, together and uh, try uh, to do uh, history and literature and uh, uh, interview type of uh, uh, relations uh, to establish their or uh, their themes. Uh, so uh, 
it's uh, uh, we uh, we reject it on a, a little bit. I, I am of the opinion. I'm looking for every scrap of evidence that Italians existed in Chicago, uh, and uh, my other co-editors were looking to uh, cut uh, unnecessary material from uh, from the book. Uh, 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 that they thought was uh, duplicative or whatever, but being a historian, I'm looking for more and more and more and more evidence. Uh, but we we made compromises, and uh, I ultimately surrendered. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, the book is the articles are mainly uh, trimmed neatly and well uh, presented and easily. Uh, uh, digested. Uh, there's one thing that readers have said is that you don't have to read the whole book through, you just can read uh, 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 seven pages or ten pages or twelve pages of a particular uh, narrative uh, or uh, uh, artistic piece. Uh, visual. Uh, I have had uh, a lot of success in, uh, in uh, going visual. Um, and I, you know, picture tells a thousand words uh, uh, is worth a thousand words, and that's fine. Uh, uh, also, I, I think it breaks down and it makes it easier to comprehend and react to it in a, an emotional way. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, also been able to. Uh, uh, inspire. I uh, maybe I'm boasting too much here, but a, a film was made about the Italians in Chicago by uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, uh, the, this film was made. It's called "And They Came to Chicago." Gia Amella was the director and producer. And it was done in 2007. And a lot of it was based on uh, the book that I had written, Chicago's Italians. And a lot of it was based on the material that we had and the pictures that we had of Italians in Chicago. My hat is off to them because they did additional research and did about 50 more interviews uh, and uh, videotaped interviews. And... Uh, uh, they collected some some additional uh, photographs, etc., uh, to make uh, Italians in Chicago. I think it's a, a very good summary of uh, uh, the basic issues and the images of uh, Italians in, in, of our history. Uh, we also have another one, uh, uh, another f film that was done uh, by uh, the Italian American veterans. Uh, museum at the Casa Italia uh, a couple years after uh, and they came to Chicago. It's called 5,000 Miles from Home and it focuses on interviews with uh, uh, dozens of Italian American war veterans in World War II uh, and their stories uh, as does the uh, ex exhibit uh, uh, that was created uh, in uh, at the Casa Italia uh, on the veterans. And at Casa Italia, we have many exhibits. We've got the uh, veterans exhibit. We've got the Italians in Chicago exhibit. Uh, we've got a spectacular uh, miniature of uh, St. Peter's Square. And we have uh, uh, a, a first-class art museum, uh, a, uh, a treatment of uh, uh, Sicily, the uh, Culture and Geography of Sicily, and of Calabria as well. Uh, plus, we've got a library of thousands of books, and uh, if, uh, we have a, a growing uh, collection of uh, uh, archival material uh, that we're slowly uh, trying to categorize and, and uh, work with. I have a group of a dozen volunteers uh, who you might have seen on my uh, Facebook page, and I recommend uh, that you take a look at the Facebook page 
uh, uh, my personal Facebook page and the Facebook page of the Casa Italia Library. That's the Casa Italia Library. It's not just the plain Casa Italia, web, uh, not web page, Facebook page. So uh, that's it. Um, archives, uh, what, what good are they? Well, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm sure that the, some of the stuff we're saving will never be accessed by anybody and maybe never be of any interest to anybody. But some of it will. Some of it will answer questions about uh, 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 geolog genealogical uh, for genealogical searches. Uh, some of them will help people in their sense of identity. Uh, some will help uh, writers to uh, create a, a authentic uh, uh, stories about uh, our past. Uh, and uh, uh, the internet, of course, is, uh, is really important because it allows us to uh, uh, spread our words. Italian Americans are what five seven percent of the population of the United States, or or maybe even less than that. And uh, the internet allows us to reach out to to them to a sol the selected people uh, and help them with their uh, journey and their uh, effort to identify to uh, as Italians to maintain. Uh, Italian, Italian-American traditions, or not. And uh, uh, so uh, the perception of Italians in Chicago is changing thanks to my work. Oh, well, yeah, the, the whole world has changed because of Dominic Candeloro <laughs> and Casa Italia. Uh, people are speaking Italian at uh, a 90% rate when they started at 10% rate. No, I don't know. I do this mainly because I enjoy it, and I, uh, I make a pest of myself, uh, pushing others to understand and enjoy it. Sometimes it works, often it doesn't, uh, but uh, it pleases me, and it satisfies something in me that wants to go back to that uh, time uh, the, uh, when uh, of my youth in the uh, Italian American community in Chicago Heights, uh, and uh, uh, but Italians have made it. They made they're all they're white people. Uh, uh, I when I was growing up, I did not consider Italians to be white people. Uh, we were others. We were the minority. Uh, uh, the others were the rich, uh, the manja cakes, the uh, Amer Americani, uh, or whatnot. Uh, uh, they they knew how to do things, uh, etc. But I didn't realize that they lacked uh, hospitality skills. Uh, I uh, uh, Italians naturally have ingrained in the culture. A, a fantastic sense of hospitality uh, and, 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 and kindness that comes out in uh, their, their ability to run restaurants and to uh, be a, a host nation for uh, the tourism that comes to Italy. Uh, this, I, I, as I grew up, I learned that uh, my, uh, my family had a better sense of how to treat people uh, than uh, uh, middle class uh, and, and upper middle class friends that I had, the families of the friends that I had. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, perception of Italians. Uh, yeah, um, I grew up before Starbucks was uh, imitating Italian coffee shops <laughs> and uh, before uh, Italy was chic and, uh, and, uh, and before Milan was the center of the world uh, the uh, uh, the fashion world and uh, and maybe even before Italian films were 
the envy of uh, uh, filmmakers. Uh, a lot has changed. A lot has changed in Italy uh, uh, since uh, I grew up, and and change seems to be coming faster and faster and faster. And what that the uh, velocity of change will do regarding this Italian thing that, uh, that I've devoted my life to, I have no idea. Uh, I get the feeling that if everyone's on a uh, device all the time, if people are interacting with each other, uh, much less uh, if uh, artificial intelligence is uh, making decisions or guiding activity uh, in the future that a lot of this Italian or, or ethnic identity uh, will be irrelevant. Or it may be the only refuge from artificiality. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just do this because I like it. Good luck.